Hey friends, welcome to Andy's Audio Crab, where we talk about audio gear and all of its glory. I am going to just start out by saying I love Audio Technica, but there is some improvement potential in this turntable. Let's get started. Right out of the gate, I love buying these. They help get people into the hobby. To buy a set of edifier speakers and these on the used market, you're about 150 in. You can find them on eBay all day long. Also, shopgoodwill.com. That's a wonderful place to find these type of things. Uh, 150 is the low, low, low end uh, off season. Now that it's, you know, we're digging into Christmas season, uh, you know, 200 is probably what you're gonna pay. Uh, to get a stereo and speakers and one of these, you're about 300. So you start talking about the economy and inflation and all that. And it starts to become quite an expensive gift for somebody, in my opinion. Uh, maybe I'm just a little bit conservative, but, you know, I'm old and that's how it works. So I thought a uh, buddy of mine were, were sitting around a, uh, a little backyard fire the other night. And we were like, man, you know, we see a lot of these come through. How, how could we improve these? How can we make them better? Let's say that somebody just wants to improve the, the audio technica that they have. They don't want to start digging into high maintenance machines or a manual machine. Um, you know, and that's really what you're going to start doing. You're either going to go retro if you want a full auto or you're going to have to, you know, go manual uh, and then you can go into the three four hundred dollar. These do sound pretty good. They have a fresh needle on them. Stylus, sorry for all these technical people out there, but um, you know, there are things that we can do to help improve it. So let's talk about that. Let's go through the kit here first. And this is a kit that I'm going to put together and throw out on eBay. So you can buy one of these. I don't know what I'm going to price them at, but it's going to be dirt cheap because there's just not a lot going on here. Uh, first of all, uh, this, this stuff called T9 Bow Shield. Uh, this is stuff I use in uh, for my uh, woodworking equipment. I have a shop out in the garage. I cover everything in this because it seriously does a good job of preventing rust and it also acts as a lubricant against different surfaces, uh, plastic to metal, metal to metal, and um, so on. Uh, the stuff I put this on does not rust. The uh, super lube is something we use in our gears and mechanicals because it has a tendency to stick a little bit better. Bow Shield will will only put a thin film on things. Um, this is something that I'll put on gears. This is just Rain-X headlight restorer. Uh, these plastic covers can look a little bit better. This one's pretty worse for the wear, but we're still gonna we're still gonna do it and and see how it goes. You're gonna have to get some kind of water or cleaner. And then this is soundproofing material. This is sound deadening is what it's called and these just come in big sheets uh, i've cut the sheet up here we do use these in some of the uh older plastic fantastic uh like techniques uh just to give them a little bit less uh resonance to them like when you click on one of these and you pound on it like so or the base is hopping it and moving it around a little bit the sound tends to come back through the needle and we're going to try and deaden a little bit of that and then uh, this platter is really light so what better than some really ultra slim wheel weights uh, it's just that simple and then because we're going to be adding some weight to it we need to add some spacers for the uh, legs the feet whatever you want to call them and so here's our three chemicals, uh, uh, lubricants and, and such. And then we need a microfiber towel so that we can do this. So all of this will come in the kit, not these, but this section down here. Let's get into uh, doing this and fast forward. And then after we're done listening to the music, you're done watching me go through and get all of this done. I will talk about uh, some of the nuances of putting this on the, on the uh, player. And that's, that's about it. Let's dig in. All right, clean off the platter mat a little bit, take the platter off, put the weights every five minutes. You'll see me doing that here. Split them up, put them on five, 10, 15, 20, all the way around. Then you're gonna take the motor, uh, where the motor's coming up there, the, the motor shaft, 
and you're going to put a little bit of lubricant on there. Take off the legs, remove the bottom, and then start putting the sound material, soundproofing material, sound reducer material, whatever it's called, uh, on there. And then you're going to put it uh, throughout the inside. You'll see me just kind of going here and there with it. You just want to make sure you're not putting it anywhere where it's going to stop any of the mechanicals or get in the way. Do remove that black cord that you saw me lift up there. On the inside here, what I've done is first I detached this black wire going through the hole in the center. You're going to need to be able to play with that here in just a second. Uh, then I put nice sound deadening material throughout. It's not really like super, super duper important exactly where you put it, but you can see where I put it. I put it between the uh, frame lines over here, put two here, put a couple here, and then I just ran strips where they wouldn't interfere with any of the gearing. And you can already hear a just a significant difference in how it sounds. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's night and day, honest to goodness. And then on here, what I did is, I mean, you can hear the difference right away. Uh, it's just, you know, part of the design. It's like they, they really are trying to create a cost-effective product and they just, you know, don't have time to, to sit around and, and stick this to it, I guess. Um, no harm, no foul. I'm just put the extra on there. And, uh, well, that's, that's about it. You can see what I've done here and mimic that with this material and you'll be off to the races. All right. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and, uh, start, you know, lubricating some of the other internals. What we're really after here is the tone arm and I, it's going to be really hard to see it. And maybe if I just take the camera off before I do it here, I can show you where I'm targeting that right there. So that right there is where you're going to drop a couple of drops of lubricant. Just like so. And it should just soak it right up. And then you're going to want to hold your turntable like so and just move this a couple of times and then tape that back down so it doesn't get away from me and that is all you need to do about that whatever you do do not get any lubricant on this little spring action uh, dealy hopper right here that is your raisin lower you do not want your raisin lower going uh, lubricant fast it has a uh, has kind of a, a delayed hydraulic fluid in there. Let's go back into fast forward mode here. All right, this is where you're gonna use those spacers. Put them between the feet and the body, the bottom, whatever you wanna call it. And then we're gonna remove the spindle. There's three screws, just detach them and pull that thing out. Pull the spindle next. You saw how I had unscrewed it and some of these will come off and some of them will not. It depends on your year of manufacturer and such. But uh, what you're trying to do is you're going to turn it upside down a little bit of an angle. Probably best to go ahead and get a towel and put it down here. And this is where you're going to use the bow shield. The bow shield is going to go in that crack. If you can get this off and then put it in there, that's the best. But some of them just don't. And... What you're gonna do is like before you start, before you add it, just twist this and and then add a little bit, work it in, add a little bit more, work it in again, and then here just kind of just to show you here. There we go. We got one more. Add and add it again, and you will feel a significant difference. And so what this does is makes it easier for the motor to to keep speed. Uh, the motor doesn't have to fight the resistance. Uh, so let's put the screws back on and 
you saw at the beginning, I dropped a little bit of the regular super lube on here and uh, just put it in the top side of the motor. Do not get it on the pulley wheel. That's very, very important. And put it back together. This is one of the most rewarding moments of this entire process is putting this back together and spinning the platter for the first time. It spins forever. Pretty awesome sauce. Now we need to buff that lid. So we're going to put that white jazz on there after cleaning it off. Buff it on, buff it off. Wax on, wax off. And we're done. It's all done now. And you'll see uh, for a used turntable, that only costs 50 bucks. This looks pretty good. I, there's some pretty deep scarring right here. These look to be like melt spots. I'm not quite sure what happened to this poor dude. But uh, if you do the tap test, she sounds pretty, pretty solid. You'll see that there's just very little continuance of the tap. And I clean that off. It's not included in the kit there. And then you not as bad. Uh, you could put some of the sound proofing uh, in here if you wanted to. I would be really, really sparing with it, but uh, you certainly can. Let's uh, let's do the turn test here. Now we're going to do the turn test and basically the best and fair, most fair way to do the turn test is to just go ahead and hit the, the start button here at the same time I hit the start or the stop button here and just get a feel for how long it's uh, going to sit here and spin, which is a byproduct of like, you know, the weight, which is what we want. All right, ready? All right, 13.54. Here's an original. Quite a bit more ring to it, huh? And then let's test. Sounds pretty hollow. Sounds pretty plasticky. You can actually hear ringing on the platter while you're hitting the side. All right, here is an original. There you go. The point on the times would be that this one is, um, you know, original and is facing more resistance based on uh, the lubricant that's in the spindle and the motor not being lubricated from the top and the fact that the platter is just uh, weighs, I don't know how many ounces, but uh, about as much as a soda can. So when we added more weight, it helps carry uh, the momentum a lot more evenly as well as less resistance from here and here the motor and the spindle so it does improve the performance of the turntable as a whole plus by adding the weight to the platter you end up reducing the amount of uh, resonance the sound that comes through the platter as well as uh, the ability for the the base, the plinth itself, to absorb vibration. When we raised the legs, we also added more padding as well. And that all helps improve the performance of what is an okay, pretty good, good turntable uh, that just is lacking a couple of improvements. By putting these, uh, this kit on there, uh, you're, you're doing really good. You're, you're going to actually uh, prolong the life. This one's really bad. I need to get a new lid for this one. This one's a, I think I put an old lid on this one because uh, the lid came in all jacked up. That's what I get for buying off of Goodwill. Uh, but anyways.
can't complain. They're awesome players.